Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're diving into my top 10 upcoming games for the second half of 2024. From epic adventures to mind-blowing graphics, these are the games that will define the rest of the year for me. These are in no particular order, they're simply just the top games I am most excited for. I'm also putting this together after Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC released, that is why you will not see it in this video. It's always fun to see what everyone else is looking forward to for the rest of this year, so leave a comment of your most anticipated games down below. And without further ado, let's get into them. Kicking off my list is Black Myth Wukong, developed by Game Science. This game is an action RPG rooted in Chinese mythology. The story is based on a journey to the West, one of the four great classical novels of Chinese literature. You shall set out as the destined one to venture into the challenges and marvels ahead, to uncover the obscured truth beneath the veil of a glorious legend from the past. This is a Souls-like game that promises fast and fluid combat. A major problem for most Souls-like games is the boss animations in my opinion. And from all the gameplay I've seen recently, the animations in Black Myth Wukong look superb and very clean. Apparently this game is also said to have around 160 enemy types and 80 plus bosses. I mean that's a lot of bosses. The game is also set to feature new game plus and multiple endings from the start. Many people were fortunate enough to play a demo of this game early, and from what I am seeing, things are looking pretty positive, and many of them have also stated that the game is easier than Soulsborne games, but not in a bad way. Now, the demo that they all played could have been tuned to be easier, of course, so we will just have to wait and see about that when the game releases on August 19th. Next up on my list is Space Marine 2. You will embody the superhuman skill and brutality of a Space Marine. Unleash deadly abilities and devastating weaponry to obliterate the relentless Tyranid swarms. Defend the Imperium in spectacular third person action and solo or multiplayer modes. I will not go into great detail for this game as I have already covered it in a couple of videos. So if you want to see more, click the card on the screen now. This game will feature a complete campaign which you can experience solo or co-op. There will be co-op operations, both of these modes are 3 players, so you and 2 buddies, and a 6v6 PvP multiplayer. Very excited for this one and the swarm technology it's using. Again, take a look at the ultimate gameplay breakdown I did for this video for everything we know about this game. You can play Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 on PC, Playstation, and Xbox on September 9th. Next we have Avowed, another game I just recently covered. This title is a narrative driven fantasy RPG that can be played in both first and third person, taking place in the living lands. It's bringing visceral combat to the table, mix and match swords, spells, guns, and shields to fight your way. Dig into your grimoire for spells to trap, freeze, or burn enemies. Bash them with your shield, or use ranged bows to attack from a distance. You won't be playing as a specific class in this game, but rather selecting your abilities from four unique skill trees. Those trees being the ranger, fighter, wizard, and godlike. Additionally, you can bring companions with you on your adventure and select companion perks for them. Obsidian's previous hits like Grounded, Outer Worlds, and Fallout New Vegas have set high expectations for this one, and it's slated to drop on PC and Xbox sometime in 2024, with the rumor being November 12th. Again, I just recently did a deep dive of this game and everything we expect to see if this title's piqued your interest at all, go give that one a watch. Inatria The Last Song a Souls-like set in a beautiful sunlit world inspired by Italian folklore, where the brightest sun casts the darkest shadow, where unique role-altering masks face formidable foes and alter reality with the power of our door to unravel the secrets of Anatria. The world has been gripped by the Cannavasio, a twisted eternal play that keeps everything in an unnatural stasis. You, maskless one, are the only one without a given role and master of your destiny. Defeat the fearsome authors that created it and free the world from stagnation by harnessing the power of our door. This Summer Souls game promises three main regions, 40 plus hours, and more than 100 different enemies. It's set to have 30 plus masks, which represent different loadouts for your character, and you can change them on the fly in the middle of a fight. The bright and colorful setting really sets this Souls like apart from the rest. Couple that with unlockable perks and many unique build combinations and you have an extremely unique Souls-like game with unparalleled flexibility. There's currently a free demo for this game if you are at all interested and want to see what that game is all about. I played through it and it sold me on the game. I very much enjoyed what it had to offer. Make sure to mark your calendars for September 18th to play this one. Next on our list is the Diablo 4 expansion Vessel of Hatred. This expansion is going to deliver the new class Spiritborn, a powerful warrior that dwells in the jungle. They can best any foe with their imbued weapons, perform powerful combo attacks, and can augment their arsenal with deadly poisons and shadow magic to slay demons with impunity. 
Ranked among the apex predators of the jungle, the Spearborn is an entirely new class to the Diablo series. They are battle-hardened with mystical synergies. We will be getting a gameplay live stream of this class on July the 18th. There is going to be the new jungle zone with more towns, dungeons, and other points of interest. There will be mercenaries, which will be similar to followers in Diablo 3. Players will be able to enlist these companions to follow them around and assist in a number of ways. From the screenshot, we can see an archer, mage, tank, and berserker as possible mercenaries to assist us on our travels. A new group dungeon, which is new to Diablo, party up to take on a new multifaceted dungeon with powerful challenges and promising rewards. First of its kind to Diablo, this dungeon will require eager warriors to team up and take down the challenge together. It's set to launch on October 8th for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, and I can't wait to get my hands on it, especially looking forward to the new group dungeon. Very curious to see how that goes. Halfway through, and we have Silent Hill 2. I was hesitant to include this game as the latest gameplay trailer at the PlayStation State of Play did an excellent job and making me less excited for this game. Regardless though, I'll give you guys this game's sales pitch. Investigating a letter from his late wife, James returns to where they made so many memories, Silent Hill. What he finds is a ghost town, prowled by disturbing monsters and cloaked in deep fog. Confront the monsters, solve puzzles, and search for traces of your wife in this remake of Silent Hill 2. It's a remake of the original and has a new over-the-shoulder camera and enhanced action combat, which, in my opinion, didn't look all that great. It's a shame, really. As someone who never experienced the original Silent Hill 2, I was originally looking forward to it, but it seems the developers have done their fair share of normalizing the game, and if Helldivers 2 Debs, Arrowhead, taught us anything, it's that a game for everyone is a game for no one. This will be one of those games I will keep my eye on, and if it gets great reception, I may end up picking it up and giving it a shot. It's set to release on October 8th. As a massive Star Wars fan, well, at least I used to be, <laughs> We have Star Wars Outlaws. Experience the first ever open world Star Wars game set between the events of The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Explore distinct locations across the galaxy, both iconic and new. Risk it all as Kves, a scoundrel seeking freedom and the means to start a new life, along with her companion Nyx. As always, you can't have a piece of Star Wars entertainment without a cute sidekick that Disney only puts in these things so they can market and sell thousands if not millions of them in stores. But <laughs> that's besides the point. Fight, steal, and outwit your way through the galaxy's crime syndicates as you join the galaxy's most wanted. Another game I will wait to see how it reviews and plays before I decide to spend $70 on it. People who have got their hands on it have had good things to say, so I guess that's one positive thing going for it. It's hitting shelves on August 30th. Next is Frostpunk 2 the city management survival game. The first game was very well praised with 92% of Steam reviews being positive. Develop, expand, and advance your city in a society survival game set 30 years after an apocalyptic blizzard ravaged dirt. In Frostpunk 2, you face not only the perils of never ending winter, but also struggle with managing factions inside the council hall that watch your every step. Typically, I personally don't jibe with these types of games, but this one specifically captured my interest. I'm personally just very attracted to the setting and environment of this one. It did recently receive a delay due to the developers needing more time to incorporate gameplay improvements and new features based on their player feedback from the Frostpunk 2 beta. You can get your hands on this one on September 20th. Age of Mythology Retold From the creators of the award-winning Age of Empires franchise, Age of Mythology Retold goes beyond history to a mythical age where gods, monsters, and humans collide. Combining the best elements of the beloved age of mythology with modern real-time strategy design and visuals, Retold is an epic and innovative experience for old and new players alike. Secure your domain, command legendary monsters, and call upon the power of the gods to crush your enemies. While Age of Empires has never really been my type of game, throw some gods and monsters in there and I'm absolutely in. It's set in a vast mythical world, besiege the mighty walls of Troy, battle giants in the frozen wastes of Midgard, and discover the mysteries of Osiris in the shifting sands of Egypt. Become a hero of myth, or even a god. My attention has been grabbed, and it's expected to release on September 4th. And finally, Concord. Concord is a live service 5v5 hero shooter. This game has everyone talking because of its similarities to Overwatch. The game contains 16 heroes, 12 maps, and 6 modes, including single life and respawn modes. It is a $40 game, but the post-launch seasonal content will be free with the exception of cosmetics, I would imagine. Heroes have two abilities, one passive, and no ultimates. This will be unique to see. For me, some of the most fun times in Overwatch is using your teamwork and multiple ultimates to form awesome combos. So curious to see what this game will be like without ults. Before a match, you have to select a small crew of heroes to choose from, and you can only swap to those selected during the game. Maybe an unpopular opinion here, but I actually like this. 
one of my biggest gripes I have with Overwatch is how often everyone swaps characters to either counter the enemy team or change it up because they're playing poorly. This, to me, was just plain boring. So hopefully, limiting the roster for players will remove that aspect I very much dislike in Overwatch. I know I'm comparing a lot to Overwatch here, but it is a 5v5 hero shooter after all. The movement, however, is said to be more like Destiny or Halo. So, we can expect it to be much slower than that of Overwatch, which is a positive in my humble opinion. There will be a public beta from July 12th to 14th, where we can all get a taste of the game ourselves and decide if it's worth our time and money. PlayStation has poured millions of dollars into this project, and they have quite the uphill battle to try and pull people away from other successful live service games, such as Overwatch, Valorant, and Destiny, where people have already spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars and hours in these games. Concord not only has to sell you on the game, but it has to be so good that you want to convince your friends to try the game, and then it has to retain them as well if they want this game to stand a chance in the current live service market. Hopefully it's a banger. I know me and the squad are eagerly awaiting a new and fresh hero shooter, so we are hoping for the best. But yeah, jump into the beta and decide for yourself if it's worthwhile. Set to release on PlayStation and PC August 23rd. So with the beta being only about a month away from launch, it's likely that the game in the beta is the game we're going to get. So definitely take advantage of that. All right, I know I said top 10, but I wanted to include a little bonus here. My personal most anticipated game of 2024 is the Liza P expansion. First off, if you're a fan of the Souls-like genre and you have not played this game, then you need to make it a priority to play through it. It's simply just amazing. Dare I say my favorite Souls-like game to date. I'll give you my brief description of the game, but will withhold most things as experiencing this for the first time yourself is definitely the way to go. You are a puppet created by Geppetto, who's caught in a web of lies with unimaginable monsters and untrustworthy figures standing between you and the events that have befallen the world of Liza P. They've done a good job at fixing bugs and implementing some good quality of life changes as well. But always, enough gushing on Liza P here, this is a video about what's coming in 2024 and the latest director's letter for Liza P suggests they are hard at work on a new expansion for the game. And after beating the game, there is a lot of great things they can do with this story. Although we don't know the release date for this expansion, I can only hope that it's this year. The game was released on September 18, 2023. So with the one year anniversary of the game approaching, I can only hope the expansion drops around then or this holiday season. This is an instant buy for me and may even be my personal highlight of the year. Be sure to subscribe as I will be covering this game as new news comes out and if it is inevitably pushed out to 2025 and uh, hopefully not, but 2026, then uh, yeah, definitely subscribe because I'll be covering that game for those years and I'll be very sad during the whole time. So yeah, all right, so there you go. That's my list of the top 10 upcoming games for 2024 and what I am personally excited for. Which ones are you most excited about? Was there any not on my radar that you are looking forward to? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe for more gaming content. And as always, thanks for watching. Take excellent care of yourselves and goodbye.